In chapter four, we're going to talk about probability distributions and random variables. Random variables are fairly important to um, our study of probability experiments. So to begin, a random variable x represents a numerical value associated with each outcome of a probability experiment. And there's going to be two different types of random variables that we look at. A random variable is discrete if it has a finite or countable number of possible outcomes that can be listed. So essentially, finite, there's just you know a set amount of possible outcomes, or countable means that you can sit there and actually count them. So there's a first, a second, a third, a fourth, and so on. Um, then the other type of random variable we'll look at is what is called a continuous random variable, and that's if it has an uncountable number of possible outcomes represented by an interval on the number line. And a good way to kind of distinguish between the two, uh, the number of calls that you can make in a day is going to be a discrete random variable since phone calls are measured in whole numbers. So you can have zero calls, one call, two calls, 10 calls, 15 calls, you name it. Whereas the hours spent on a phone call is an example of a continuous random variable because you could be on the phone for one minute or two hours, pretty much any time between zero minutes or zero hours up to 24 hours, the whole entire day on the cell phone. So since you can be anywhere in between zero and 24, that's gonna be continuous. Whereas over here, discrete is whole number jumps. And so we'll practice determining the difference between a discrete and a continuous random variable. So for the first one, X is going to represent the number of times you do laundry this month. Well, you're either gonna do laundry once, twice, three times, four times, however many times, but it's a whole number. So you can sit there and actually count up how many times you've done it, which leads us to say that this is a discrete random variable. <clears throat> uh, we're gonna let X represent your annual salary given to the nearest cent. So there's still going to be a lot of possible outcomes here, but the fact that there's little tiny jumps um, from one cent to the next cent essentially means that this is a discrete random variable. Now, let X represent a car's speed as it drives past the Oneonta exit on westbound I-88. Well, you could be going from really, really, really slow to really, really, really fast and anything in between. And so there's going to be a whole interval worth of values that a car's speed could land in. That leads this to be a continuous random variable. And then let X represent your height at age 10. And so you might be hitting growth spurts and your height, there's not gonna be a jump um, between how tall you are at one second and then how tall you are at the next second. You're going to go through the entire span of the differences of those heights. And so this is also an example of something that is continuous. <clears throat> and then lastly, X is gonna represent the number of math classes that you have taken in your lifetime. Well, you've taken at least two math classes um, and you take a full class, we're not gonna count half classes. So this is an example of discrete discrete random variable. And so we're gonna focus in on discrete probability distributions, um, which are essentially applying these discrete random variables to probability. <clears throat> and this is what we're gonna focus in on for the rest of the chapter. So a discrete probability distribution, list each possible value the random variable can assume together with its probability. And so it's gonna be given to you in tabular form, so in tables, 
Um, and it has to satisfy two or both of these conditions for it to be a discrete probability distribution. First, like we saw with probabilities, they have to be between zero and one inclusive. So you can have a probability of zero saying that it never happens. You can have a probability of one, which says that it always happens, and you can have anything in between. All we know is that the probability for each random variable X has to be between zero and one. And then if you were to take the sum of all the probabilities, that should equal one. All right, so these discrete probability distributions are keeping track of all possible things that are happening and they're telling you how likely each outcome is bound to happen. Um, so for these three tables down here, let's determine if each of these represent a probability distribution. So we're gonna check each of these conditions for each table. And if a table works for both of them, it's a probability distribution. If it doesn't work for one of these, then it's not. So if we look over here, P of, here's how we can read this, P of negative five is equal to 0 0.5, which is between zero and one, that's good. P of six is equal to 0.25, which is again between zero and one. And if we do P of nine, that gives us 0.25 as well. So the three random variables, negative five, six, and nine, all have a probability that lands between zero and one. So number one works. And then for number two, if we take 0.5 plus 0.25 plus 0.25, essentially take the sum, we end up getting one. So that tells us that this one is a probability distribution. And so we'll just say yes here. <clears throat> now, if we come over here, again, notice that the probability of one is 0.4, probability of two is 0.4, probability of three is 0.4, probability of four is 0.2. So the first part works. Now, if we come down here and we add these up, so if we take 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.2, we end up getting 1.4, which is larger than one. And so this is not a probability distribution, this table, because the sum adds up to greater than one, and we know that the sum of all probabilities has to equal one. And then lastly, if we come over here, the probability of a one is 0.04, Probability of a two is 0.04, probability of a three is 0.04, and a probability of a four is negative 0.02. I don't know what a negative probability means. Um, so probability of four is equal to negative 0.02, which is strictly less than zero. So this fails the first one, which says that it has to be between zero and one, this fails the second one because it adds up to larger than one.